Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern, Ned Reynolds, back in the studio. It's Thursday morning, and the puffy jacket has reared its ugly head once again. I got to stop talking about it, because every time I do, it's like karma slaps you in the face instead of me. If you're the one who's bringing on the cold weather, you need to get your face slapped. <laughs> <laughs> this stuff needs to go, go, get it out of here. Do you guys see what I deal with every morning? All right, well, I played baseball in school. I'm not saying like I'm I'm super knowledgeable at the game, but I did play a lot. And there are certain things that, you know, I pick up on. But I think there's some things that I think really the general public as a whole understand when it comes to baseball. Mm-hmm. For example, if a pitcher has a no-no going, there are certain things that you don't do. You don't talk about certain things. It's I know it's superstitious, but I'm a superstitious guy, and a lot of guys in that sport are superstitious as well. But one thing I think I've never heard in my life is the fact that a pitcher has got a no-no going, manager pulls him. What in the Sam hell, Ned Reynolds? Well, I must admit to you, I'm not familiar with any circumstance ever having happened like this, and not only is it a no-hitter, it's a perfect no-hitter. Clayton Kershaw had it going through seven innings yesterday, and when manager Dave Roberts took him out, there was no kicking, no fussing, because they had pre-arranged it. I love this, and I love Clayton Kershaw's attitude. Now, keep in mind, folks, perfect no-hit. No-hitters are rare. Perfect no-hitters are not only rare, they just don't happen. I'd say they don't. It's been, there are very few in, in history. Perfect no hitter is nobody reaching base. And in this case, none of the Minnesota Twins had reached base through seven innings against Clayton Kershaw. But as Dave Roberts, the manager of the Dodgers, said, hey, look, look, we've got a long season to go. It's 38 degrees. And that's what they're playing outside in Minneapolis yesterday. 38 degrees. Still had 17,000 fans on hand. That's pretty good. Uh, but look, We've got a long season to go, and Kershaw said, you're absolutely right. I let We're going to hold it 85 pitches no matter what. 85 pitches. Got out of the seventh inning. They said, okay, that's it. Now, some of the fans booed because they oh, hell to be yeah, there. They but did. the bottom line is this. Kershaw, and I love this attitude, said, hey, we've got a long season to go. We are a good team. I want to be a part of it. Hope we can get through with the World Championship. The score was 7 to nothing. The game was not yeah. in doubt. But the fact is, he get, left the game after seven innings. Twins did get one hit off the relief pitcher, but 7 nothing was the final score. Perfect no-hitter. It goes in the books as seven innings of no-hit baseball, but it does not go in as a no-hitter. It sucks. It really does. I, I get it. Uh, and you gotta you, if that if you're a Dodgers fan, you gotta applaud that pitcher and his mentality as being a teammate because he sees the bigger picture beyond his own accolades. And when you look at players, especially in professional sports, how many times do they care more about the accolades than what the actual team accomplishes? So yes, in that stance, I get it. But dude, we're talking about six more outs, yeah, Ned. Keep in six mind, more though, outs, Clayton man. Kershaw is an old pro who's been around for years and years. Been a National League Cy Young Award winner. Been a star of World Series teams. He's had his share, and he sees the bigger picture. So that's why I admire him. But still, it took a lot of guts. Six outs, dude. Six outs. A perfect no-no. Oh, my God. All right. So uh, still technically in the free agency for the Kansas City Chiefs and in the NFL at large. Uh, there have obviously been some – if you look at the picture of – The team when they won the Super Bowl, and you look at the picture of the team now, there's not a lot of guys and coaches that were, well, coaches, yeah, but players really remain. There's only a few, select few, really. Kind of surprised some of these other guys haven't signed with other teams, though, yet. They still will. There's no question about that. Uh, Tyran Matthews still out there on the free agent market, supposedly talking with the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he has been with the New Orleans Saints. He's been talking with the Philadelphia Eagles. There are a lot of circumstances involving him. Problem with Matthew is that while he's still a pretty doggone good player, he will be 30 years old next month. 30 years old, that's, uh, that's a, a consideration point in, in the National Football League. Same thing with uh, Jarek McKinnon, a running back who came in and had sparks of glory for the Kansas City Chiefs last year. He turns 30 next week. So you have to look at this, how much longer are they going to stay? Because in pro football, you know about the age factor and the rate of attrition brought on by that. Matthew hasn't signed. The one who bothers me a little bit is Melvin Ingram. 
I really do think he'll come back to Kansas City. But yesterday, as recently as yesterday, is talking with the Miami Dolphins. Mm-hmm. And uh, that yeah, Miami's got the money to spend. Well, the Chiefs do too, but I Miami also back. has Tyreek Hill there. Yeah, they yeah. Have, they're building up for a, a very big run. Daryl Williams hasn't signed with anybody. Did have a tryout with the Arizona Cardinals. But I do think on April the 14th, you've still got a while to go before the draft, another week and a half or two weeks. And I think probably teams are looking very much, obviously, at their payroll, their salary cap. What can these people contribute to us? Because they're not young, and they've been through the wars. So I think there are a lot of considerations, but I'm a little surprised that some of them haven't signed. Yeah, me too. Uh, What do you think about that uh, Derek Carr deal that got signed recently? I think the Las Vegas Raiders were tired of all of the, the subtleties and the rumors that were going around about Carr not being their QB and say, hey, look, he's going to be the QB. Let's end this right here and sign him to a three-year extension worth about $125 million bucks. That's a lot. But what it does, it tells you that the Vegas ball club has a lot of confidence in this yeah, kid. they do. And he's not a kid. He's been around for a number of years now, had big year at Fresno State, big years there, has had big years in the NFL with some very poor teams. Well, the Raiders are not a poor team anymore. They're pretty good. So I think their, their obvious consideration is let's stay with what we have because it's going to work. Just keep building them up, building them up, so they crash hard in the fall. <laughs> but I'll tell you right now that that makes uh, me make, make all these recent uh, quarterback resignings, extensions, all that stuff just makes that Patrick Mahomes contract look better and better and better. Because you're looking at Derek Carr getting the same kind of money Patrick Mahomes is. They are not the same quarterback, and I'll say that right now. Well, and Mahomes is the best in the NFL. It, it's an arguable point, but uh, he has proven himself at a young age, and he's only 26. So, yeah, it, it is costly, but to sign him and make sure he's in the fold, it's going to work, barring any injuries, of course. Yeah, Mahomes is the best, but keep in mind, it is not one player. Yes, I know. Games. It is a team sport. You have to remind me of that all the time. Last but not least, speaking of team sports, Jury Baseball Panthers have had one hell of a season so far. Where are they doing now? They're 24-9, and nine, as a matter of fact, and playing extremely well. They open a four-game home series today, have a doubleheader tomorrow and a single game Saturday, and will not play on Easter Sunday. They are playing the Bearcats. Who are the Bearcats? They are Southwest Baptist. And you know where they are? About 25 or 30 miles up the road is where they are. <laughs> They'll be coming down to U.S. Ballpark in Ozark to play in a four-game series starting this evening. Uh, should be a lot of fun, maybe a little bit on the cool side, but hey, it is spring baseball, and uh, the Drury Ball Club is hitting the daylights out of the ball. They're, they're a good team. Are they a national championship team? That remains to be seen. They're going to have to improve their pitching and defense a little bit. Did they go up against Central Missouri, which is one of the top teams, fortunately for Drury, not in the Great Lakes Valley Conference, but rather in the MIAA. Still Division Two, and they would meet them somewhere along the line in the playoffs if, in fact, both teams are good enough to get to the playoffs, and I suspect they probably are. So in this case, it's the Panthers against the Drury, uh, against the Southwest Baptist Bearcats. Should be a great series coming up. SBU is not all that bad. Should be a lot of fun. So Cardinals and Royals finished up their I-70 series. They're going their separate ways. Where do they end up today? Well, as a matter of fact, they do. They do go their separate ways with only playing one game. So they'll have to make this one. Uh, They had a lot of rain up in St. Louis. What a surprise yesterday. And their game was uh, rained out. They'll make it up on May the 2nd. That's the game in St. Louis. Now they have two more coming up in Kansas City. That'll be later on this summer, but actually in the very near future. Anyway, the uh, Cardinals are in Milwaukee to help the Milwaukee Brewers open up their home season later this afternoon. The Royals go back down I-70 to Kansas City, and they will host the Detroit Tigers tonight at Kauffman Stadium. So both those teams are home. I beg your pardon. The Royals are home, and the Cardinals are on the road for the first time this year. St. Louis hasn't been on the road. They've been all home games, and actually the Cardinals have played pretty well. So we'll see what happens now they go on the road. The Brewers have been on the road as well to open up the season, so they're back home in Wisconsin 
at what used to be called Miller Park. The stadium has a new name now, the corporate America getting involved in the scheme of things. But nonetheless, it'll be the Cardinals and the Brewers this weekend. Surprise, surprise, corporate America getting involved <laughs> in things, Ned. Uh, Springfield Cardinals that were supposed to play yesterday, but of course we had some uh, inclement weather. Did they get they one did in? Get the game awesome. In. The uh, inclement weather, which was rather serious down in the Little Rock area, did move through in time, and the Texas League didn't want to postpone the games any. So they did play, and they got the game underway about 4.15, 4.30 uh, yesterday. Uh, I'm sorry for the Springfield Cardinals, they did, because they were not hitting the ball at all. Held to two hits for the game and shut out by the Arkansas Travelers 8-0. A little bit misleading because this was a close game. It was 2-0, Arkansas going into the last of the eighth, and then the Travs poured home six runs to make the final game Pretty, or final scores, I should say, but pretty much out of reach. So the finals, 8-0. They'll play again in Little Rock. And this series concludes on Saturday because the Springfield Cardinals are not going to play Easter Sunday. They'll take Sunday and Monday off and then return home for a series. I like the Cardinals ball club. They only got two hits yesterday, but I still like them. They're a pretty good ball team. If they get everything together and get their starting lineup solidified, which it isn't yet, I think they're uh, they're going to be a force in the uh, Texas League. It's, it's damn time, too. Last but not least, we had the second round of the NBA play-in games for the playoffs, and these games were a little different than the first round because those guys in the first round got a second chance no matter what happened. But this time, if you lost, see you next season. That's exactly the way it worked because it was C's number 9 and number 10. They were the ones involved. And the team saying so long to the season are the Charlotte Hornets and the San Antonio Spurs. And that one surprised me a little bit. The Spurs were playing the New Orleans Pelicans last night. The Pelicans have had a pretty good team, a pretty good year, I should say, for a young team. They started out 3-16 and on the year and uh, have continued to get a whole lot better and did get the win over uh, the Spurs last night. So that means the Spurs are gone. They're, they're finished for the season. But the Pelicans have one more game to play. It'll be tomorrow night, and who knows what will happen. They'll go to Los Angeles to play the Clippers. The Clippers were losers in their first play-in game, but that's the way it works, seven against eight, and you did get a second chance. So the Clippers will host the Pelicans. The winner of that one goes on to the playoffs. Now the uh, Charlotte Hornets were uh, in action last night, and, and they didn't play very well. In fact, they got run out of the ballpark by the Atlanta Hawks. Atlanta's a pretty doggone good basketball mm-hmm. team. So Atlanta, and again, the loser's out of it now. Charlotte's gone. They're finished for the season. Atlanta goes on to play, and they will play the Cleveland Cavaliers coming up, and that'll be tomorrow night in Cleveland. So from there on, the winners are the ones who survive. The next round of the NBA playoffs is the regular season round, and that is best of seven, and that starts on Saturday for most of the teams and then Sunday for some of the others and continues right on until the championship round. It's exciting time. If you're a basketball fan, Ned, you have a wonderful Thursday, and I will see you tomorrow, sir.